Hi, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 5, the states of matter. And now we are in the subtopic of 5.2 liquid. So in this video, we're going to learn about the properties of liquids, which include the shape, volume, surface tension, viscosity, compressibility, as well as the diffusion. Also, we're going to explain the process of vaporization as well as the condensation according to the kinetic molecular theory and the intermolecular forces. Next, we're going to define the vapor pressure as well as the boiling point. Last but not least, we're going to explain the relationship between the intermolecular forces as well as the vapor pressure, and we're going to relate the vapor pressure back with the boiling point. So this learning outcome will be covered in this video. So without any further ado, let us start. So the properties of liquid. As what you can see here, the liquid has a fixed volume but not a definite shape. Let's say if we are measuring 50 ml of a solution in a measuring cylinder and then we place it into three different containers, what we can see is that the volume will be fixed at all the situation. But what different is, uh, the liquid will follow the shapes of its container. And this situation can be explained because the particle inside the liquid are arranged closely but not as close together as in solid and their intermolecular forces are not strong enough to hold the particle firmly in place such in the solid. And as a result, the liquid particle has a flexibility to flow and fits the shape of its container. Next properties of the liquid is the compressibility. As what we can see here, the liquid is very, very difficult to be compressed in comparison to the gas. And this is because Inside the liquid, there are going to be a little empty spaces between the particles, so it's very, very hard to be compressed. Next properties is viscosity, in which the viscosity were defined as the resistance of a liquid to flow. Ataupun rintangan untuk bendalir itu untuk mengalir. And the greater the liquid's viscosity, the more slowly it flows. And the viscosity in Malay, we call it as kelikatan. As what you can see here, the water which is from coming from the water tap is less viscous in comparison to the honey. So, madu ini lebih likat daripada air tersebut. Dan dia adalah lebih pelahan untuk dia mengalir. And with the viscosity are also dependent on the size of the molecule. So, when the size of the molecule increases, they're going to be more resistant to the flow. And as a result, the liquid will become more viscous. Similarly, the viscous will be depending on the intermolecular attractive forces. So when there is a stronger intermolecular forces, the liquid will become more viscous. Viscosity will also depend on the temperature. When the temperature gets lowered, the viscosity decreases. And this is because the kinetic energy of the molecule will get slower and slower and slower and as a result, they are closer together and very, very difficult to flow. Okay? Now we're going to look into the surface tension. So the surface tension is defined as the amount of energy that is required to stretch the surface of a liquid by a unit area, in which this situation can be seen on the top surface of the water, in which there's going to be a cohesive force ataupun daya tarikan between the particle at the surface as well as the particle within, particle within the liquid. So, the water molecule on the surface are pulled downward and sideways from the neighbouring molecule in which they are going to create a layer that are strong enough to hold the water molecule together. And as a result, it can allow the paper clip to float on top of the water. And that is why you can also see inside in the lake, the water slider can also float on the surface of the water and these properties is explained by the surface tension. And of course, the stronger the intermolecular, the intermolecular forces, the higher the surface tension will be. Next, we're going to look into the diffusion. So, the diffusion rate of a liquid will be much lesser than the gases. And this is because the liquid molecules are much more closely packed 
and has a lower kinetic energy due to the stronger attractive forces between the liquid molecule in comparison to the gases. And as a result, the diffusion inside the liquid will take longer time in comparison to the diffusion of gases in the alveoli, which is inside our lung. Now we're going to look into the process of the liquid, which is condensation. So the condensation are defined as the process in which the gas transforms into a liquid. And according to the kinetic molecular theory, when the temperature is lower, the kinetic energy of the molecule will get slower as well. As a result, the molecule will get closer together and they cannot overcome the intermolecular forces. And this will allow more vapor molecule to strike to the surface and it will stay at one position and accumulates the liquid particle together. And as a result, the gas from the surrounding will be condensed into the liquid. Next, we're going to look into the vaporization. So the vaporization means that it is a process in which a liquid is transformed into a gas through a surface. And the vaporization can happen at any temperature. Dekat mana-mana suhu. Tidak semestinya dekat suhu pendidihan. So, according to the kinetic molecular theory, the liquid molecule gains energy and moves quite freely because some molecules have relatively high kinetic energy. So, dalam molecule air tersebut, ada sesetengah molecule yang bergerak sangat-sangat laju and menerima lebih banyak energy daripada yang lain. And as a result, it can overcome the attractive forces that bind them and it leaves the surface as a vapor. And this is where we can see that the liquid is being transformed into a gas at any point of the temperature. So now we're going to look into the vapor pressure. So the vapor pressure are basically the pressure that were exerted by the vapor molecule above the surface of the liquid in a closed container. As what mentioned, uh, inside a closed container, the liquid molecule can be vaporized into the vapor molecule, which is labeled as the yellow color here. So this yellow particle here will move in a constant random motion and it will continually strike to the wall of the container and it can also hit to the other vapor molecule as well as it can also hit back to the surface of the liquid molecule of the liquid here. And every time the vapor molecule hit to the wall of the container, which is the dinding, a pressure is going to be exerted. And by understanding the vapor pressure, we can relate that with our boiling point, in which the boiling point refers to the temperature at which the vapor pressure equal or greater to the, to the external atmospheric pressure. Okay, jika vapor pressure bersamaan dengan atmospheric pressure, maka the boiling process can occur. And it is a process in which the liquid changes into the gases and it occurs at the surface as well as to the inner part and it a place where the bubble can be seen and it occurs at a specific temperature and pressure according to its surrounding. So you can say that when the pressure is at 580 m, the temperature might be 500 degrees Celsius for the boiling point to occur. So let's say if your surrounding atmospheric pressure is 10 atm, then the boiling point will change as well. Let's say 980 degrees Celsius. So the boiling point will be dependent on the external atmospheric pressure. Okay, and it is not necessarily happened at 1 atm. It needs to depend on the external surrounding atmospheric pressure. Now we're going to look into the normal boiling point. So the normal boiling point is basically the same definition as the boiling point, but it happens at 1 atm. Yang mana 1 atm ini adalah atmosfera yang berada di bumi. And at this temperature, the vapor pressure, when it is equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is at 1 atm, equal or greater to, then the liquid will have a sufficient energy to overcome the atmospheric pressure. And then you can see that, the liquid started to form bubble and it's going to be released as vapor because it can overcome and creates the vapor molecule. And at the atmospheric boiling point, 
we can say that the pure liquid water will has a normal boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius in which it happens at 1 atm. So the keyword here, the normal boiling point only occurs at 1 atm. Now we're going to look into the relationship between the intermolecular forces, which is IMF, vapor pressure, as well as the boiling point. So these three things are interrelated from one another. So for the intermolecular forces and vapor pressure, so when the intermolecular, force, the intermolecular forces got higher, then the vapor pressure will be get lower because the molecule will be whole. So inside a liquid, the molecule will be hold much more tightly together and it is very very difficult to live as a vapor. As a result, vapor pressure will get decreased. So this situation can be seen with water. So the water has a low vapor pressure because it has a stronger intermolecular forces between the water molecule in comparison to the ethanol because water has a higher number of hydrogen bonding in comparison to the ethanol. And then from this two understanding here, we can relate that with our boiling point. So for the boiling point, you can just directly look into the intermolecular forces. So with the higher intermolecular forces, it means that more energy is needed in order to break the bond in between the molecule. And as a result, more energy is needed to break the forces, hence produces a higher boiling point. And as a result, water will has a higher boiling point in comparison to the eta law. So I think that's all for this video. See you again some other time. Bye.